So I was searching around on the internet for some cool stuff and project inspiration when I came across this crazy folding door. I tracked down Warwick Turvey, he's the one that built this door, and I asked him for permission to build a version for myself. Hey Warwick, it's Johnny, and man, I absolutely love your door, and I would love to build a version for myself. What do you say? Hey Johnny, thanks for getting in contact with me. Mate, I'd be really keen to see you build one of these doors for your shed at home. I was super excited and I knew this door would be perfect for my shop, but first I had some rearranging and some framing to do to make it all work. And real quick, I wanna show you all this 3D model of the door and throw up a shot of all the dimensions in case you wanna screen grab those for yourself. All right, all my pieces are cut, all the miters are ground in, and now it's time to start welding these frames together. Precision is going to be the name of the game on this build, so making sure that all those angles are nice and square, making sure that the top frame and the bottom frame match exactly. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'll assemble the bottom frame first, tack weld it all together, and then use that as a template to assemble the second frame right on top of the first one, and then once I have it all together, I can come back and run full beads. Real quickly before I move on to the next steps, I wanted to stop and explain what I'm using as the hinges on this project and what is going to be the center pivot point. So for hinges, I'm using these. These are called pillow block bearings. I'll use two of them and this three quarter inch shaft, which will slot through. This will get attached to the frame inside the doorway and the door is gonna pivot on these 
basically what's a makeshift hinge. Now in the center, it's very important that everything pivots perfectly around that center point. And for that, I'm using these super heavy duty bushings, also three quarter inches. I'll use this same piece of steel rod. That'll slot in there like that. And that center will pivot. around this giant bushing. So I have to install this by laying out exactly where it's gonna go in between the two center triangles and then cutting around that and then welding this piece in place to one of the triangles. And then there's a plate that's gonna go over that will attach to the other triangle and everything will pivot around that. model from SketchUp, I created SVG files in the door panels and imported those into Inventables Free Software Easel. All of those panels are then carved out of quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. All right, I've got all the panels cut out and now it's time to apply a stain. I went back and forth for a while as to what the colors I was gonna use on this door. And what I decided is I'm gonna go with an all black theme. I figured the easiest thing to do was use this. This is called Indie Ink. It's super cheap. I'll leave a link for this down in the description. Like I said, I've got to apply the stain to all of these, let that dry, and then I can come back and do the epoxy pours in those voids that the light will be able to diffuse through. for some epoxy pores in these panels. And the reason I'm doing this is to completely close off the door, but then to allow light to diffuse through it. So to do that, I'm using Total Boat's two to one epoxy. This is kind of my go-to. And I'm gonna pour it in these little voids that I cut out over on my X-Carve. Now, the reason why it's all taped up and clamped down in this fashion is because this quarter inch plywood it's got a bit of a curve to it. So if I don't clamp it down, chances are the epoxy is gonna go everywhere. There's still a possibility that might happen. I really hope it doesn't. I think I've taken all the precautions here. So I'm gonna mix up some epoxy, 
add just a touch of white pigment to diffuse it and then start pouring it in these uh, voids. Okay, so it's time to get this door hung in the door frame. And as you see, I've already got a speed square clamped up to keep my hinge hardware nice and straight. I showed you before, but I'm using these pillow block hinges and this three quarter inch steel shaft as my makeshift hinge. And then I'll mount it with some four inch, if I can get this thing back on, I'll mount it with some four inch lag bolts into the studs. There's actually two studs back to back right here. And that should be strong enough to hold this door that I'm guessing weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 pounds. Pretty, pretty stout door, but this should be strong enough to hold it. And that should work in theory, in theory.
thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications to see what crazy thing I'm gonna make next. Also thanks to Inventables and Total Boat for sponsoring this video. Inventables 3D software Easel is a free download and I've got a 15% off coupon for Total Boat down below. Also a big shout out to all my Patreon supporters and there's info down below if you're curious about joining yourself. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you back here next time.